As an artist, you can change the world somehow a little bit. Berlin has a lot of opportunities. I don't know where else to be here in Germany. It's the only city I can live. When I first came to Berlin, I could already sense the potential of the international food scene. This certainly had to do with the first wave of immigrants after the wall came down, consisting of artists, rebels and other visionaries. Berlin has changed a lot since the 90s, and with the influx of new cultures and cuisines, the flavors of Berlin have evolved. I'm interested to see how these changes have inspired Berlin chefs to reinvent their food culture. I'm at White Trash. White Trash is a bit of an institution in Berlin. It was set up by a guy called Wally. It was super famous for its burgers, super famous for its crazy parties, and for its tattoo parlor, and, and, and. And about a couple of years ago, they got chucked out of Mitte because of rising rent prices, and they have moved here to Kreuzberg, set up this amazing garden, this amazing smokehouse, an amazing concert hall. And we're going to speak to Wally about how he thinks Berlin has changed over the past 20 years and what the impact of expats has been on the city. Can I come in? Yeah. Hey. Hi, Mr. Wally. Say hi to the camera. Hey, hi, hi. <laughs> wow. Oh, hi. Nice to see you. But you can say Good. hi to me as well. <laughs> hey, hello. We've come to talk to you about your amazing space, your fantastic life, and to get your opinions on the future of the city. Okay. Deep questions. I promise to tell only the truth. Are Good. we allowed to sit down and can I have a drink? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't <laughs> offer already. Come, join me. What should I drink? I like the blackberry margarita because you don't ever find a blackberry margarita anywhere. Victor! Oh. Are you working today? I am. Could you put in a good word at the bar and get us a margarita, a blackberry margarita? Blackberry margarita. Frozen margarita, yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, okay. So the staff are very cool. They're too cool. <laughs> Fuck. They're really too cool. I don't know. Tell me how you arrived in Berlin. I was first year in 90, 91. And it was told it was really an accident going to art school in Los Angeles and then I started I wanted to go do a year exchange in Paris and meet hot French chicks. But then they called right before the program was supposed to start and they said, no, we don't do it anymore because we don't want to pay. And uh, then they offered me Berlin. That's my margarita. There you go. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. So, it's really blackberry. <laughs> huh? Cheers. Mm. Mm. <gasps> Snacks. Hey, this is cool. They just started making corn dogs. We used a spicy beef hot dog. You guys want to try one? Whoa! There's your corn dog. What was the area at the time that everybody was, like the art scene was flourishing in? I don't know. At that time, going to art school and art scene is two different things. Everything was happening at the same time. It was more on it. It was like a big happening. Everybody just rushed to the space and was flowing into this no man's land where there was no kind of structure and no rules and nobody quite knew, even the people that were in East Berlin didn't know what was going to happen tomorrow. People didn't know, some people didn't know if they have to go to work tomorrow. If you hear from me about what was the first experience, it was totally from somebody outside who didn't speak any German and didn't know what to expect here. Berlin is a weird place. You can actually do anything you want to do here. Eighties, Kreuzberg has been one of the most diverse and interesting neighborhoods in Berlin. Today, there are about 180 different nationalities in the neighborhood, and nearly one third of them have Turkish roots. The laid-back attitude, the colorful atmosphere, and the great bar and restaurant scene draws in creatives from across the globe. So we're in the middle of Kreuzberg and Neukölln on a very busy street called Koppos Adam and we're going to go and visit a expat artist who moved here from Korea in her studio at the back of this building. As you can see, the buildings in Berlin 
might look ugly from the outside but have beautiful little paradises in the background. Hi! <laughs> Meet you. <laughs> Maybe you can show us a little bit of your work that has food integrated into it. This year, it was an installation I made. I had potato cutlings. The only nutrition I gave them was my own blood with natrium chlorid, and they grew quite healthy. So your blood is really <laughs> nutritious. I looked like a vampire after we really? steamed that. Yeah. I'd love to taste one. <laughs> yes, we can do that. Some Blutwurst and Kartoffeln. <laughs> it's my little wunderkammer. Wow. Did you mummify that yourself? Yes. That is crazy. What's that? It's a little pig. Look at this. So this isn't really food art. <laughs> <laughs> I had this idea a really, really long time ago of making a strawberry cannon. I thought, oh, maybe it's funnier to, to use a bicycle. In Vietnam, in the war, the soldiers, they were driving these bamboo icicles and had the cannons on oh, the top. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So how does it work? Um, <laughs> this is actually, it's a, it's a pump for um, cleaning your sink. Basically, you have to sit on it, you have to paddle, and then you can aim with this and start shooting with a brake. What's the artistic meaning behind it? It's a little bit political also, and okay. it also, um, if you think about fermentation, uh -huh. it's, it's this kind of um, idea of um, processing and transformation from strawberries into mashed strawberries, and then you can take it and make um, gem out of it, so it's not about wasting food. Okay, so you're not using it as like a secret weapon on the street. I, I can do that. <laughs> The Klunker Kranisch. We're gonna get this bike set up and then we're gonna start shooting it. Yes. <laughs> Take the bike. This is loaded. It's no fun. All right. All right, shall we go? We ready? One, two, three. So, what's in our ammunition drink? <laughs> it's a lot of gin, a little bit of soda, okay. then we uh, have the strawberries okay. and the hand-picked mint leaves, which I picked by myself. And a little bit of soil from the floor. Yes, a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> All right, Sweet food. It's a lot of gin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're here in Friedrichshain, a part of town that I don't really hang out in. But although it has loads of tourists here, got loads of filth, there is a little oasis on the Aare Wegelände, which is basically an old piece of land that used to be to repair trains. And the best of it is this little imbis, which is run by three Berlin kids who've all got Korean roots. And they do... <laughs> I hate you! You did that on purpose! <laughs> This fun place is all about. Yeah, this is Korea. This is the slogan for our Son Barbecue Kitchen. We built it up with the idea to give the audience a place like you feel the same like the feeling in Korea. What is that? This is kimchi tempura. Oh, can I taste some? Of course. <laughs> oh, it's really hot. Mm. Mm. It tastes like crispy kimchi. Fatty crispy kimchi. Meet the viewers. 
Hi. What kind of food generally are you selling here? Uh, we want to have the fusion one. We want to have a burger and every time a new side dish. And now it's just our kimchi tempura. Also, okay. we have our kimchi fries. Can we get a burger? Yeah, sure. I like sure. this one. Okay, first I have the, the black zephyr bun. bun. Yeah. People are in love with the zephyr bun, right? I think so, yeah, yeah. And I put some Sorry. lecture and my grandma's are doing some the honey Ooh. beef. But we normally then people use uh, cheddar, but okay. our is, is the sweetness of the gouda is very important in our burger. Okay. And then we put the kimchi tempura on oh. the top. Put some red kimchi on it. Then our homemade mayonnaise and also the wasabi mayo a bit. And we put also fresh kimchi. It's also Good. a little bit freshness on the top. And some season. Uh, I think I want a little top. bit more kimchi on mine. Oh yeah, for sure. Little Maybe. bit more. <laughs> Good for the health, right? Yes, thanks. Good. So. Thank you. you <laughs> okay, what about hot sauce? The hot sauce. Yeah, I have also. Okay, let's take it to the people. table. Wow, the wasabi mayo is hot. It's good. I like it. We can start a game actually with that. There's a soldier bottle, around 20%. Not that much. <laughs> but if you drink it, you might feel nothing. But later, after like 30 minutes, it's like hammer smash on your head. So oh, don't great. underestimate it. <laughs> that sounds like a pleasant yeah. drinking <laughs> drink. You twist it. Uh -huh. So that's what Koreans do. Then they open up. The first game is to snap the thing away. If you can make it, the other people have to drink. If you let it fall down, then you have to drink. Down. <laughs> Cheers. I kind of feel a bit left out of this drinking game, so I'm going to have a shot anyway. Mm. Cheers, guys. Thank you for the delicious food. Welcome, welcome. Asiatische Küche trifft immer den Geschmack, finde ich. Das kann man im Winter essen, im Sommer und es ist immer leichte Küche und man ist nie irgendwie zu satt. Once evening sets in, the urban spray area in Son Kitchen turn into a beating cultural hotspot with exhibitions, workshops and an art store, all dedicated to urban art. My next stop is Noble Hat and Schmutzig, which has become, I would say, one of my favorite restaurants in Berlin. It's run by Billy Wagner and Misha Schäfer. Since I moved here, there weren't many young chefs doing courageous things with German food and kind of taking it to the next level. Billy and Misha have basically broken that boundary. That is so good. Nice having you. Wie geht's dir? Gut. Möchtest du was trinken? Ja, bitte. Also wir haben Portwein, weißen Portwein von Quinta de la Rosa, extra dry. Da geben wir eine ordentliche Portion rein. Dann nehmen wir englisches Tonic Water, nämlich Fever Tree. Dann muss man das einmal umrühren, dass sich auch der Alkohol nach oben mischt. Und dann kann man es eigentlich schon trinken. Thank you. Am I drinking it on my own or are you gonna have one? Ähm... Prost. Oh, ihr habt nichts mehr, ne? Tja, fett ist Wir haben was zu essen für dich vorbereitet, wenn du möchtest. Einmal ein Stück Aal mit etwas Kresse oben drauf. Der Aal kommt von dem Müritzfischern. Der ist ganz, ganz leicht geraucht. Das Schöne ist, dass wir den eigentlich nur aufschneiden, von den Gräten lösen und dann mit ein bisschen frischen Kresse, die so einen Rettichgeschmack hat, das ist so eine Rettichkresse, beträufeln. Und dann dazu parallel ganz jungen Kohlrabi. Wow, that is delicious. It's really great to appreciate 
German food, not just being schnitzel or currywurst, or, and just think about what the possibilities could be. That is so good. Mm. Why is the time now right for your restaurant? Also, ich glaube, dass deutsche Küche weltweit mit äh, Haxen und Spätzle und Maultaschen ähm, häufig eine Regionalküche ist, die sehr rustikal äh, interpretiert wird. Aber auf einem gehobenen Niveau gibt es da nicht wirklich eine Antwort. Deswegen gibt es dieses Restaurant hier, so wie es das hier gibt, dass du halt um die Küche herum sitzt, dass du dein Essen anfasst, dass du einen Bezug dazu bekommst und dass wir, also die, die ja auch kochen, auch einen Bezug dazu bekommen. How happy are you with the products that you've got in the region? Wir haben jetzt großartigen Aal gefunden. Wir haben jetzt wunderbaren, richtig geilen Stör. Wir haben jetzt tolle Milch und machen daraus großartige Butter. Du siehst jetzt hier am Boden ist so ein bisschen einreduzierte Sahne. Und dann kommt ein bisschen rohe Karotte dazu. Also Karotten entsaftet und dann Kamillenblüte eingelegt. Stunde ziehen lassen, Kamillenblüten abpassiert. Dann schmeckt dein Karottensaft nach Kamillenblüte. That is crazy. You need to try this. How many of the ingredients that you use in the kitchen in the restaurant are from outside of the region? Die Hauptprodukte, also das Gemüse, das Fleisch, der Fisch, das kommt alles so zwischen 150 und 200 Kilometer außerhalb von Berlin her. Möchtest du auch Wein zu deinem Essen? Ein Schluck. <lacht> Berlin has always been a multicultural place, and because it's so open and free, chefs aren't forced to have an identity that's strictly one-dimensional. It's that freedom that allows them to adapt to the new Berlin really easily. Their approach comes from the heart, and it's constantly pushing the boundaries of what's traditionally understood as German cuisine. But of course, Berlin is not only about food, and as some of you may have heard, Berliners love to drink. This city has a huge and diverse bar scene, so the next episode is dedicated to drinks and drinking culture. <laughs>